Hi, this is Ron Kleinman again, here to review the new improved Mega Garden from Hydrofarm. Like the Imley's Garden we reviewed a few weeks ago, the Mega Garden comes with everything that's needed to assemble and operate the system. Well, everything that is except for water and seeds. The two main components are the grow container resting on the nutrient reservoir. Also included are 15 five and a half inch grow pots. First install the half inch rubber grommet in the nutrient reservoir. This grommet will house the view drain tube. Place the column provided inside the reservoir to support the grow container. Lay out the submersible pump and other fittings for installation. Use the installation sheet provided for install reference. Install all grow container fittings, then attach the submersible pump to the flood and drain fitting. Fill the reservoir with clean water to the bottom of the grow container. Once the reservoir has been filled, the Mega Garden will be just about ready to operate. Although optional, I recommend adding an air pump and air stone to aerate the nutrient solution. Aeration of the nutrient solution accomplishes two things. Number one, it keeps the solution well mixed, and number two, adds additional oxygen which is beneficial to root growth. As you can see, the air pump and air stone are easy to install and the benefit of aeration is well worth the little extra cost. Merely place the air tubing alongside the pump cord in the place provided. Now the system is set up and we can attach the pump to the timer and add nutrient to the water. Check the operation of the pump and adjust the overflow fitting. The pump will run for 15 minutes per timer cog, which should be plenty of time for the flood cycle. Place an empty grow pot in the grow container to make sure the nutrient level is high enough for adequate absorption. To prepare rock wool cubes for seeds or cuttings, soak the cubes in a slightly acidic solution, around 5.5 pH, for a couple of hours. A heat mat is an excellent device to speed up the germination and root propagation process. The heat mat from Hydrofarm contains germination instructions and other pertinent information. I generally use a double tray setup for germination and root propagation, the bottom tray being solid and the top tray perforated. Arrange the rock wool cubes either in strips or separated in preparation for planting. We are planting several varieties of lettuce to grow in our mega garden. Keep in mind when you plant to make sure that any plant you put in the grow container has the same pH and nutrition requirements. I generally put two seeds per cube in case one is a dud. In five or six days you should get sprouts that look very much like this. In about two weeks you should have decent plants with substantial roots like these. All these seedlings are ready to plant. When planting in growth media, remove the outside sleeve of the cube. If placing the cubes on a rock wool slab, 
Keep the sleeves on. The next step would be to add nutrient to the reservoir. For these young plants, we will use a grow nutrient at a TDS of 200 to 300 ppm at a 6.5 pH. To plant in hydrogen or grow stones, rinse the product well and place the plant in the media so that the moisture will reach the plant's roots. In the early stage, it may be advantageous to use a strip of absorbent cloth as a wick from the bottom of the grow pot to the roots. In the next few weeks, you should be able to harvest several leaves at a time for some terrific salads. All in all, I found the Mega Garden an excellent system, very easy to use and maintain, and very inexpensive. And here again, you wouldn't want to argue with an old farmer now, would you? Here's a very informal added feature showing a temperature control process using a digital control heat mat. So here's basically the way that we're going to set this up. I've got some 3 8 tubing here, vinyl tubing, that I've bent. And we're going to put this in the access hole, like so. And then we're going to put the uh, sensor directly into that. So basically this is what we got. Stick it in far enough so it's pretty close to the bottom. And we'll just stick it in here so we sense the water temperature. Now this is pretty good because it's right into the water area. And this will stay up there no problem. So we'll see how that works. Right now, the temperature of the water, we'll just put it in there. It's about 48 degrees. That's pretty good for Seattle water. So we'll see how that warms up, or if it does. So now all units are filled with uh, nutrient solution. Uh, we're not going to plant anything in these yet, but uh, we're going to see if we can control the temperature with our heat mat setup to make it even feasible to do in this cold garage. Okay, right now we're uh, 53.9 degrees in the garage, and we have this unit set on 68 actually. I'll give you the setting thing here. So it's set on 68. You can go up and down with this thing to go higher. And it just went off the heating cycle, I noticed, so we must be pretty close in the nutrient solution. Well, one more thing about this that's kind of, it's a little vague in the instructions, but you notice you have a centigrade and a, a centigrade and a Fahrenheit position here. And in order to put it in the centigrade, you push on the down button and hold it. And it just switched over. Okay, then to go back to the Fahrenheit, push on the up arrow hold it and there you go. So now we're at 68 degrees or we've satisfied the demand of our of our thermostat controller. So let's see what we are in this nutrient solution. Okay, we've stabilized out at 
67 degrees, so we're pretty close. Now, I'm going to bump it up to 70, so it'll probably stay pretty close to 70, but it looks like this is a success. Okay, one more thing about this probe temperature sensor. Uh, the manufacturer recommends in the instruction book to not submerge this and in, in directly into the liquid. I think it probably would be okay, but I like to follow the rules since they probably know. Anyway, it works very well in this tube, so and it's pretty easy to make, as you can see. So anyway. That's it. It's uh looks like a go.